In 1926, Claude Fries Green filmed a journey from Land's End to John O'Groats in colour. The harbour town of St Ives. The busy streets of Cardiff. London's Petticoat Lane. This remarkable film captures the essence of Britain and her people. By 1926, the British have emerged from the First World War tired but triumphant. Their new possessions span a million square miles. Britain still has a passion for colonial rule and a desire to improve the lives of her subjects. Field Marshal Douglas Hay. The call for imperial unity is not the selfish and despairing cry of an outworn people. The men who fought beside us in the Great War know that the old country, with all its problems and its difficulties, is not played out yet. But the grand optimism of empire is fading. Britain, the mother country, is divided by class and wealth. Her old industries, shipbuilding, textiles and coal are in decline. Employers reject calls for higher wages. The rise of trade unions threatens the old order. In May 1926, the miners walk out of the pits and the rest of Britain's organized labor follows. The general strike. Here is the last news bulletin for today. His Eminence Cardinal Bourne made the following declaration. There is no moral justification for a general strike of this character. It is therefore a sin against the obedience which we owe to God. From the Rhonda Valley, a miner's letter to the Workers Weekly. Some men have labored in this colliery 25 years, toiling so that their exploiters may live in luxury. Then they are cast upon the scrap heap. When a horse has served its purpose underground and become too old, it is mercifully shot. But when a man has served the same purpose, he is not shot, but left to exist on a mere pittance. He was fraternally CP from Abbot Tridor. After only nine days, the general strike is broken. But it will be eight months before starvation drives the miners back to the pits, forced to accept lower wages and longer hours. Britain's ruling class has crushed the general strike with ease. For decades, it has exercised power across the world, and nowhere more than in India. <laughs> 